Good morning. When Jesus speaks his message to the people in Smyrna, in Revelation 2, John records his kind words, I know. I mean, isn't it comforting to remember that when we suffer, the Lord knows. We read in verse 9, I know your works, what you're doing to serve me, your tribulation, what others are doing to you to hurt you, your poverty, how you have suffered loss because of me, but you are rich, and the slander, uh, what others are saying about you to hurt you and your reputation, I know. But then he informs them, because he knows the future, that the persecution is not over. More is coming. Now granted, it won't last, but it will take place, and Jesus urges his beloved church to remain faithful to him, even if it is unto death. The scriptures and history record that many died for their faith in Jesus Christ, because they would not renounce him. So knowing the persecution happening, with more to come, how could God's people live with such knowledge and not be undone by it, not be terrified about the future, about every knock at the door or the latest news? Uh, how does anyone live with the knowledge that persecution against Christians does happen and will continue to happen until the end of time, uh, when Jesus destroys all his enemies, thus putting an end to persecution? How do you live? Well, listen again to the text, when Jesus speaks of their poverty, and it reminds them that they are rich. That's a good lesson. When we face persecution or suffering of any kind, we should pause and rehearse the Lord's peace. After all, we have him, the Prince of Peace, to turn to, and he's given us the Holy Spirit within who produces peace in us. And that peace, it's not affected by our circumstances. Now, think for a moment. Do you have peace when your world is not at peace? Well, that's when you know you have the Lord's peace. I mean, if your circumstances have to all be right and under your control for you to have peace, then you aren't really depending on the Lord's peace within, are you? The Lord speaks peace. To his people. And listen to Jesus speaking to his disciples. It's for us today in John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So I exhort you to remember the Lord's peace. Whenever circumstances would tempt you to be anxious or afraid, rehearse the Lord's peace. I would quote that verse out loud, right in the face of any anxious thoughts or fearful feelings. Want to try it? John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. One of my go-to passages for peace should be familiar to you from Philippians 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And what you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Those are good words for today. Let's receive them, meditate upon them, and walk with the fruit of them. That is the Lord's peace. Let's pray. Oh Lord, thank you that you, as the Prince of Peace, have come to live within us 
and impart to us your peace. Thank you that we do not have to live in anxiety or fear, but we have your peace that is greater than those temptations. So today, may your peace rule in our thoughts and in our hearts, our feelings. Thank you, Lord, that you will enable us to walk in perfect peace. And now offer your prayers. God bless you.